Hello, hello, and welcome to day 19 of 100 Days of Clarity with yours truly. I am excited to have you guys here because today we're going to break from our regular cadence as we're going to focus on deploying smart contracts, and we're going to do it to mainnet. Um, we're going to go ahead and do it two different ways. And yeah, again, as I stressed last time, uh, it's really the second way that we're going to visit the terminal that is what you need to be able to figure out um, or what you need able to what you need to be able to use in case of emergencies um, first though we're going to start with a block explorer you guys see in the url explorer.stacks.co and really simple we're just going to go to sandbox and here is a form to go ahead and write and deploy so we're going to go ahead and call our contract uh you know, hello world, hello world community. And we're gonna call this one Explorer so that it's clear that we drop this one um, from, from the Explorer here. So all you do is press in deploy and you get an error message. And again, this is exactly why, as I am saying, you do not want to rely on explorers because sometimes, hey, they just don't work. Uh, it's really, really hard to maintain this, uh, to maintain a lot of the infrastructure here. And yeah, we're just gonna try logging out, logging in and see if that fixes anything. And if not, we're gonna go ahead and call it and just go over to the terminal part. So, okay, hello world community explorer. Uh, we're gonna go back to our contract. We're gonna just copy all of it. So control A. And yeah, we're on Chrome. Here we're just gonna select all, paste. And okay, cool. So this time we, we do get a confirmation screen. Um, as we can see here, hello world community explorer. The contract address we're going to be deploying it on as and you know how much of a fee we need to pay so we're going to go ahead and confirm here and if you go ahead and you open the block explorer on another tab and you go to pending you can indeed see hello world community explorer is a contract that has been deployed a few seconds ago and it is now pending so Congrats, super exciting. We now have a contract that is gonna be live on mainnet. And so you're gonna be able to interact with the functions that we wrote, uh, you know, shortly. Cool, so while that's waiting, and again, I definitely wanna, I definitely wanna stress that, that Stacks is anchored to Bitcoin. So people always ask like, oh, how long does a, how long does a Stacks block take? The only real right answer is, as long as a Bitcoin block takes, that's it. Uh, sure, there are subnets, there, are, you know, there are there are micro blocks, there are a bunch of stuff, a bunch of infrastructure that Stacks is working on that will speed up confirmation in Stacks. But if philosophically you believe that only anything that's ever been confirmed to Bitcoin itself is what's considered truthful or verified, then yes, you're going to have to wait until there's an anchor confirmation, which is what is referred to in Stacks as an anchor block that's confirmed with Bitcoin. And actually, yeah, before we go to the terminal, you can actually see here, um, Bitcoin blocks, stacks blocks, the block height in each chain and how long it took to confirm the last block. So while we're waiting, we're gonna go to the terminal. And again, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and open another terminal uh, to show you guys what I did here. Okay. And I know I am showing a private key. You never want to do that ever. But again, I spun this up just for this video. Uh, again, as you recall in video two, we installed something called Stacks node or Stacks CLI, right? And so if you go to the terminal and you type in Stacks help, you see that it spits out a bunch of functions. So this terminal and that, and that Stacks package is how you can interact with the Stacks blockchain without 
any front end or client uh, or, or any client side. Again, when you hear the like, oh, developers, you know, minted a contract early or ahead of time or anything like that, this is how it's done. So as you can see, we run Stacks Help. We get a lot of different functionalities here. Going over the topics, we have account management, authentication, block stack ID management, CLI, uh, did Gaia key management, namespace operations, peer services, profiles, and querying block stack IDs. 90% of the time, you're going to refer to either account management or key management. Right now, we're going to use key management. And within key management, there is a function called make keychain probably not the cleanest nomenclature but make keychain as you can likely guess spins up a new stacks and bitcoin wallet or address so we're going to go ahead and clear here so we can view everything and i'll show you guys that if we run stacks make keychain we get this response with one, a seed phrase. I think that's 24 word. Yeah, 24 word key seed phrase. And then an object called key info that holds the private key, the stacks address, and the Bitcoin address. As well as another way, as well as another Bitcoin address or another way of naming it and the index uh, of this wallet. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, exactly sure if index is nonce. I, I suspect it is, and just there's an error in like the labeling here. Okay, but this stacks make keychain function should catch you guys up on what I did on this previous command. All I've done so far is in our terminal. Uh, I'm, actually, I'm going to leave it here. All I did was call stacks make keychain. Below, we see we have again a seed phrase, a private key, etc. Uh, all I did right now is sent a, I sent some stacks from another wallet to this address. Why? Because, well, you need some stacks to be able to deploy a contract or send stacks or do anything that requires a transaction fee. Uh, so as you can see on the other, on the block explorer, we see that this still hasn't happened. Uh, it's been 17 minutes, you know, 18 minutes now since the last block confirmation. And yeah, our Hello World Community Explorer contract is still waiting. And at the same time, the function that I use to send stacks from another wallet to fund this wallet is also waiting. And so while they're waiting, we're going to go ahead and start going through the logic of deploying a contract here. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and press... Actually, no, don't clear, uh, especially if you didn't write down, you know, the seed phrase or anything. Definitely don't don't clear. Uh, usually I would say, you know, open up another terminal. Uh, so we're actually, yeah, for safeguard, we're going to do the exact same thing uh, and just leave this open so we can refer to it. Okay. First, we want to CD all the way into, into the directory that we want to deploy a contract. So again, CD documents, CD GitHub. And CD clarity practice, CD 100 days of clarity. Um, and then within there, LS to see what we have. Okay, cool. I'm actually going to CD into the contracts directory as well, which we almost never do. We press LS. Cool. We see those three. We only have three files in the current, in the current directory that we're in. We have three files, Clarity Basics 1, 2, and our community, Hello World. Uh, okay, so remember how we typed in stacks help to see functions? We're going to go ahead and do that as well. So stacks help. And again, like I said, 90% of the time when working with Terminal, you're going to look at account management or key management. Uh, this time, we're going to look at account management. So we can call balance, we can call can stack, uh, call contract function, right? And again, if you want to interact with the contract from the terminal, this is exactly how you do it. You would call contract function. 
uh, call read only contract function. Again, I hope that that sounds familiar to you. As we've talked about multiple, multiple times, there are three general types of functions in Clarity. Read only, public, and private. As you can see here, we got one function called contract func for the public and another for the read only functions. Okay, uh, convert address and then boom, deploy contract, which is exactly the function that we're looking for. Uh, again, it is unrealistic that you are going to remember uh, all the syntax here. Don't bother trying to commit it to memory. I still, I, I never remember any of the syntax. I basically go through this process of writing stacks help. And then as you're gonna see, I'm just gonna call deploy contract, not, not passing anything, knowing it's gonna fail, but knowing it's gonna pass us some useful information in terms of its syntax. So stacks, deploy contract. Okay, cool. As you can see below, we're still waiting for this block to confirm. Uh, okay, so first we see invalid command arguments. Well, that, that should make sense. Um, okay, and below it we see command deploy contract usage. And now we see some useful syntax. So we see deploy contract, which is a function we call. Then to the right of it, we see source file contract name, fee, nonce, and payment key. Again, underneath it as well, we see those five flags. We see source file, which is a path to the actual, again, to the file in, the, in whatever directory we're in. Contract name, we assign a contract name, fee, nonce, and then, sorry, fee is an integer, nonce is an integer, and payment key is our private key AKA this guy here. So this private key is what we're gonna use as a parameter and that will allow us to sign the transaction to the Stacks blockchain. Uh, okay, sorry, I lost my other terminal here. Okay, cool. So if we wanted to run this, we would say, sorry, let's, let's read underneath a little bit more, blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's read an actual example. So here we see stacks deploy contract, then dot slash my contract dot clear. And by the way, that dot slash just means you're going down a level in directory. That's all it means. Don't let it confuse you. Um, for that reason, that is why I'm suggesting just CD change directory all the way into the contracts file. So that little stuff like this doesn't throw you off. Uh, my contract, again, the contract name. Then we have the fee. I want to make a correction here. The fee is not in stacks. It's in micro stacks. So when you see here and we see one, this is not one stacks. That is one one millionth of a stacks. Uh, obviously, probably not a good you know transaction fee at the moment. And then the nonce or aka how many transactions this wallet has had or the number of the index of the next transaction. And then the payment key or the private key. Cool, so now let's go ahead and I expect it's not gonna work the first time around. Uh, syntax here is not that easy to work with, but we're gonna try deploy contract. Uh, source file, which we know is community dash hello world dash community dash hello dash world dot clear. Um, mm -mm, okay. Contract name, we're going to call it, we're going to, we're just going to leave this one as community hello world. I actually will call it terminal and okay. And our fee again, this is in micro stocks, not in stacks. And so instead of making it, you know, one stacks, we're going to do 0.1 stacks, which instead of a million would be a hundred thousand. So, okay. Uh, the nonce or the index of this wallet, which we know is zero because we haven't initiated any transactions with it. And then our private key. And so for the private key, all you do is go down here, copy this guy, go back to the terminal. We paste it. And again, I expect the transaction to fail because again, the syntax is ugly and we probably did something. 
Uh, but if it didn't and it goes through, I just want to give the heads up that since we haven't gotten a stacks to this actual terminal wallet uh, yet, again, we're waiting for that confirmation, um, then the transaction will fail and we should run this again in the next block. So we're going to go ahead and press enter. Uh, and okay, so command not found. Okay. And the error here is really simple. At before deploy contract, we didn't even tell our terminal, hey, we're using the stacks package. So it doesn't know what to do because we just wrote in a bunch of instructions with space. Uh, stacks space. And I'm going to just refresh this to check if maybe it's a front end issue and a new block has loaded. Uh, again, for what it's worth, I rarely throw out this number because people will hold you to the expectation. Bitcoin blocks on average, which again is not that useful of a metric, uh, are 10 Bitcoin blocks on average take 10 minutes to confirm. So the next one, as you can see underneath here, this block is now taken 26 minutes, which is a long, long time. The one before took four, the one before took one minute and the one before took six minutes. So again, whenever people want you to like give a time or anything that has to do with block height, it's simply not possible these are these are, you know that 10 minute average is just that an average uh okay so we're gonna we fixed our function we're gonna we have stacks deploy etc we're gonna go ahead and call it sorry we're gonna go ahead and just press enter again it takes a second and okay cool so cool it actually knows transaction rejected and the reason and it gave us a reason and this might be a new feature because I haven't seen this before, but it tells us the exact reason, not enough funds. Uh, cool. And so this means that we do indeed need to wait for this transaction to happen or more importantly, for this transaction to happen. So we're gonna go ahead and pause for a minute and then we'll restart once this block has been confirmed on the anchor block, has been confirmed. Okay, well, that took a little bit longer than expected, but if we go back and we see the waiting, the pending transaction that we were waiting for, it's now complete. And actually, if we go to the contract deploy uh, page, we can see that our Hello World Community Explorer contract was confirmed in the anchor block. So yeah, this smart contract now lives in the smart on the Stacks blockchain. You, you know, watching this, you know, I don't know if this is a week, month, years from when this was published, but this contract will live on the Stacks blockchain. Feel free to check it out. I'm sure a lot of you will, will interact with it by then. Um, and yeah, we're just going to wrap up by deploying that same contract on our terminal. Again, as discussed, this wallet should now be funded. So all we have to do is run this function again, uh, and it should go through and even better since we deploy the contract through the Explorer, we know the contract itself is good. It's going to deploy. So as long as this transaction goes through on the terminal, we're good. And you'll have covered the two main ways of deploying a contract. So we're going to press up arrow. Cool. And so this time the response was different. This time we get a transaction ID. And even better, we get a transaction link. So we're going to go ahead, uh, copy paste this link. And if we indeed type in that link, we can see community hello world terminal contract is now in the mempool. Awesome. Uh, with this, we'll call it a day. And again, this was a really, really great way of wrapping up what was the last couple of days of writing your complete smart contract, your first complete smart contract. Uh, congratulations. And again, if you ever, you know, if we ever go too fast or you lose cadence of the steps of writing the clarity contract, come back to this video. Next videos, I'm not going to go over the macro steps as, as in detail as I did this time. We're going to be getting better and better and going and you know getting faster at writing them. Uh, the next few days, however, we're going to take a break from writing. We're not going to go directly into another contract. We're going to take a couple of days 
to go back and continue expanding our knowledge of the basics of clarity. Uh, thank you once again, and I will see you on day 20.